Hello. We are going to take a little bit of time today and we're going to talk about something that I've mentioned in class and something that you're probably familiar with somewhat, but it's called downward division. Now, we use downward, downward division for a lot of things. Um, believe it or not, downward division actually is called by another name sometimes and they call it Korean math. And the reason why they call it Korean math is because the Koreans actually discovered this method. And it really is a very cool method to use for lots of different things in, in our math classrooms. All right, let's just start a little bit. One of the basic things you can use uh, downward division for is to find um, greatest common factor. To find the greatest common factor, you generally will find all of the factors of both numbers. Look for the factors that are in both and choose the greatest or the largest. GCF is greatest common factor. For example, this is the old way of doing it and this is a way that a lot of people are comfortable finding greatest common factor and that, that's perfectly fine. If this is comfortable for you, what you would do is you would list all of the factors of 40. This is difficult for some people because they, they lose pieces of it. They don't put it all in there. For instance, when I write this out, I write it 1, and then I write 1 times what is 40? 1 times 40. And then I write 2, 2 times what is 40? Oh, 2 times 20. 4 times what is 40? 4 times 10. 5 times what is 40? 5 times 8. We know there isn't a factor for 6, and we know that 3 doesn't go into 40, so we're done with that. 60 is the same thing. 1 times what is 60? 2 times what is 60? That's 30. 3 times what is 60? That's 20, etc., etc. You go down through the whole thing. Then you go ahead and look for the factors that are common for both. And I just circled those, I made red circles around them so that you could see. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. Okay? So I made a list of them down here. And now you're looking for the biggest one. Okay? And in this case, these, these don't go on forever. These, this is a finite list. Okay? They don't go on forever. So you would write down all of these factors that are common to both and you would look and see that 20 20 is the largest and so the greatest common factor of 40 and 60 is 20 okay so let's take a look at LCM LCM stands for least common multiple least common multiple when you list out multiples of numbers and multiple means like uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 counting by fives 20, multiples of 20 would be 20, 40, 60, 80. You would list the multiples of both of the numbers that you're trying to, to work with. Like 40, I would list 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, etc., etc., etc. If I was listing them for 60, I would write 60, 120, 180, 240, 300, etc., etc., etc. These, this list is infinite. It goes on forever and ever as the multiples list is finite. There's only so many multiples. Then you would look for commons between these two lists. The first common I run into is 120, so I circle both of them. 40 goes into 120, 60 goes into 120. It is the smallest number that both of them go into, and therefore it is the LCM, least common multiple, is 120. Okay, now let's consider a way to find the prime factorization of a number, greatest common factor, least common multiple, and we can do it all in one set of work with a lot less time. Okay? Now, we are going to use downward division, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the prime factorization of a number. One note, right here, I've got it written in red, I hope it shows up that way. 
always use the smallest primes to divide first and then get bigger. And you'll end up with a list of the primes from the smallest to the largest. It makes it easier when you're supposed to write out the prime factors of a number to have them kind of in order from smallest to largest. So right here in front of you, you will see prime factorization. I took 32, I put it in the box. 2 is the smallest prime I could think of other than, well, 2 is the smallest prime because 1 is not a prime. So 2 goes into 32 16 times, 2 goes into 16 8 times, 2 goes into 8 4, 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 2 1, and then you're done. You don't use 1 because it's not a prime. And then over here you have 20. 2 goes into 20 10 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times, 5 goes into 5 1, and then you're done. Now you can list the prime factorization of 32, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That is without exponents. Okay, and exponents are the little tiny numbers like this. Or you can, you can write it as 2 to the fifth power with exponents. Okay, and then over here you've got 20. 2 times 2 times 5, and that's without exponents. And below it's 2 squared times 5, and that's with exponents. And note, all we had to do was look to the left here. And we had all of our factors to write down in a row, in order, smallest to largest. Bingo, we're done. Okay? So that really is a slick way of doing it. Now you can use this same thing to um, work with the greatest common factors. So let's go back to our greatest common factor that we had before. I think we were talking about 40 and 60, okay? And let's use double downward division. Ooh, scary, scary. Remember to use the smallest primes, okay? Start out, we have 40 and 60. They're both even. So the smallest prime we could use is 2. So that's what we'll do. We'll divide both by 2. We get 20 and 30. They're both still even. So we're going to divide by 2 again. We get 10 and 15. Now they're not even anymore. And 3 won't go into them. The next prime is 5. And 5 will go into them. 5 goes into 10 twice. And goes into 15 three times. Now we have right here is the greatest common factor. All we have to do is take these three numbers and multiply them together. 2 times 2 times 5 and we get the greatest common factor of 20. Now I'm going to remind you that we found that here. Remember? Remember what we went through to find it on the very first page? We found the greatest common factor is 20. Okay? We just found it using just this. Really is faster. Okay? Now, let's use the same numbers. And we are going to find the least common multiple. You can use downward division to find the LCM or least common no multiple. We're going to use the same two numbers. 40 and 60. And we're going to do it again. 2 goes into 40 twice, or excuse me, 20 times. 60, 30 times. 2 goes into 20, 10 times. 2 goes into 30, 15 times. 5 goes into 10 twice. 5 goes into 15 three times. Only this time we want the least common multiple. Okay? So with the least common multiple, we look at this shape here, the L. The L stands for least. L. Think L for least. L. Okay? Think L. Alrighty, you have 2 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 3. I just put little multiplication signs right here. And then you could write it down. So the LCM is 2 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 3. And if you do the math, guess what? It is 120. And guess what? That is also what we found when we listed all of the multiples. Now, this is a lot shorter. I'm telling you, it's a 
lot shorter and it's a lot less work. And I think you're less likely to make a mistake with it. Okay, so we have talked about finding the G GCF. We've talked about finding the LCM. Now, let's just do a little bit of practice work with it so that we know what we're doing. Okay? So, find the prime factorization of 80 using downward division. Okay, remember, if we want to set this up, we're going to set it like this. We're going to go like that. We're going to put 80 right here and 2 in front of it because it's even. 2 goes into 80 40 times. 2 goes into 40 20 times. 2 goes into 20 10 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times, 5 goes into 5 1 time and you're done. Prime factorization of 80, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Woo, that went fast. And there you are. That's what it looks like. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 or if you're going to write it with exponents, 2 to the 4th times 5 easy pie. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to find the GCF and LCM of 24 and 42. So, we're going to write 24 and 42. Now, we're going to do double downward division to do this one. Okay? So, they're both even. We'll put 2 in front. 2 goes into 24 12 times, 2 goes into 42, let's see, 21 times, um, however, 2 is not even anymore, but 3 is your next number that you try, the next prime, 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 will go in, 3 goes into 12, 4 times, 3 goes into 21, 7 times. Now, we know right now that nothing goes into 4 and 7, so it is time to find the GCF and the LCF of these numbers. GCF on the left. GCF on the left. 2 times 3. GCF is 6. LCM, find the L. LCM, find the L. Okay, so it's 2 times 3 times 4 times 7. 2 times 3 times 4 times 7. Okay, and there we go. When we do the multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24 times 7 is 168. And look at how easy that was. There wasn't very much work involved at all, was there? Okay. All right. One last cool tool used for um, downward division. You can actually use it to reduce fractions. Let's start with the fraction 8 over 40. We're going to write it in here like this. We're going to write inside 8 over 40. Okay? And then you, this part here stands for your division sign. And I just put it in to remind me that I'm working with a fraction here. So they're both even, so I divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 20. Keep going. Divide by 2 again, you get 2 over 10. Divide by 2, you get 1 over 5. And look at there, the reduced form is 1 fifth. 8 fortieths equals 1 fifth. And if you don't trust that, you can sit over here and go, okay, 1 over 5, does it equal 8 over 40? 5 times what is 40? 5 times 8. So you have to do the same thing to the top. 1 times 8 is 8. Ah, by golly, they are right. Okay? And here's another one, okay? 96 over 108. So they're both even, so 2 goes into 96, 48 times. 2 goes into 108, 54. Even, do it again. 24 over 27. And let's see, these are both add up to multiples of 3. So divide by 3, 8 ninths. Look at there. This little bit of work right here gave you eight ninths, which is your reduced form. I'm telling you, this is a pretty cool method. Okay? I want to do one more. Okay? We haven't. I haven't worked this one out at all. 
We want to do 28 over 72, so I don't really need that piece of paper. Okay, here we are, 28 over 72. They're both even, so 2 will go into them. 2 goes into 28 14 times. Draw your line. 2 goes into 7 3 times with a remainder of 1. 2 goes into 12 6 times. They're both even yet. 2 goes into 14 7 times. 2 goes into 36 18 times. And I do believe, believe that's it. I don't think there's any other number besides 1 that can go into both of these. So there is your reduced fraction. 7 18 is the reduced form of 28 over 72. And if you don't trust me, you could take 7 over 18. Does it equal 28 over 72? 7 times 4 equals 70, or equals 28. Take this times 4, 10, 20, 30, 40. Yep, 72 is correct. Yahoo! I hope this is helpful. You do have a worksheet probably that you're going to be doing for me if you're in my class to help you to practice these skills. And we're probably going to have a quiz later. So, have a great day. Thanks for listening.